Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sorry, we had a little bit of an issue there. So alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'een. Brothers and sisters, mashallah, just a few more days remaining of Ramadan. Do you believe that? Subhanallah. If you'd like to join me on the live, you just need to comment to say, Assalamu alaikum, please can I join the live. And inshallah, we'll try and take five or six uh, of the brothers or sisters, inshallah, just for the evening. We hear from you. You tell us about your Ramadan. Tell us about your preparations for Eid. Tell us how things are going, your family and anything beneficial you want to share with us, inshallah. And we take it from there. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. You might notice I'm wearing a pure Omani traditional dress today. This hat is from Masqat. This was tailored for me by a beloved, beloved friend of mine, mashallah, in Oman and uh, amazing. So today I was just in that Omani mood, mashallah. And I was thinking to myself, I'm going to phone him and tell him, Habibi, I'm actually wearing this traditional dress of Oman, but I thought it's okay. I'm sure he will hear uh, the the someone tell him that Subhanallah, uh, you know, uh, the traditional dress of Oman was featuring today. May Allah bless you guys. Okay, someone says they are from Oman. Maybe we can pick you. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. If you're from Muscat, let's see if you want to talk to. Us. Remember, if you're if you're not ready, you may decline. You may decline the. Uh, the video or you may decline speaking to us. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Can you hear me? MashaAllah tabarakallah. Unfortunately, I feel you because you know what? I feel like an Omani today. MashaAllah. May Allah bless you guys. You know, Oman is one of the most beautiful countries I've been to simply because two things. Number one, the people and number two, the nature. So the place reminds me of Medina Munawwara uh, a lot. And I lived in Medina for quite a while, subhanAllah. And at the same time, the people are so beautiful, subhanAllah. They are hospitable. They are kind. I'm talking of the majority. So mashallah, I really loved the people and their ways. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Habibi, I love your rabta, you know, your turban, mashallah. Uh, yeah, so I'm from India. More about you. I'm from India. Amazing, mashallah. And tell us, uh, how was Taraweeh this evening? Alhamdulillah, it was good. Were you the imam or were you behind? Sorry? Were you the imam leading the taraweeh or you were behind? No, 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 no. I was at the back. This, like... The imam, were you leading the taraweeh? Yeah, I was reading the taraweeh. Okay, okay. Mashallah, that's great. That's great. And how Mufti, is everything? Mufti, I have, uh... Mufti, yeah. I have a question. Uh, I'm yeah. just suffering from past money and I'm just suffering from anxiety and panic attacks. Panic attack. Uh, it's very difficult like to live the life. It's like feeling like dying. I feel somewhat. Habibi, my beloved brother, you know, you need to increase the remembrance of Allah. Those who believe. Uh, they achieve the comfort and contentment of the heart through the remembrance of Allah. For indeed, it is through the remembrance of Allah that the hearts will achieve the contentment and the comfort. Habibi, increase the remembrance of Allah and lay your trust in Allah completely. What is the time in India right now? Uh, I guess it is one o'clock. It's one forty-five. It one o'clock. Do you believe that the sun is going to rise in the morning? Yes. And do you know how dark it is outside right now? Yes. So Habibi, you are certain that the sun is going to rise and this darkness is not going to last 
Wallahi, the same Lord of the sun who has created the sun and the darkness and the rays of daybreak, who's going to bring the beautiful sun, is the same Allah who will give you a very, very good future by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There will always be the daybreak after the darkest hour of the night. So Habibi, if you are going through a dark patch or anxiety, uncertainty, I want you to know that all of us have a slight concern for the future. But when we hand it over to Allah, it helps us just relax ourselves, Habibi. Take it easy. Allah is the owner who made you. When he made you, subhanAllah, you were helpless. He made sure there were people around you to carry you. At a time when you couldn't speak or communicate, the only thing you did was actually cry. When you cried, he created someone to pick you up. The crying became an irritation out of love in order for you to be able to be nurtured by someone. Allah placed a natural love in the hearts of your folks in such a way that today you are where you are. The most vulnerable part of your life, you've actually overcome it. The time when if you were left, you would have died. You were not left. So do you think Allah is going to leave you right now? Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la. Habibi, lay your trust in Allah. Allah is the greatest. Make dua to him. Call out to him with conviction that he has heard your dua. He will give you your best. Another thing, don't ever feel self-pity. Look at the energy Allah has given you. Look at the gifts Allah has given you. Do whatever you can to achieve the best that you think you need in your life. So you look for a job. You keep looking for a job. You never give up. If you have been refused 20 times, don't worry. The 21st job will be better than all 20, subhanAllah. But the day you give up, Allah doesn't give up. But when you give up, you've given up, subhanAllah. So Habibi, I just want to tell you, may Allah bless you, strengthen you. We're praying for you. Increase the dhikr of Allah. Have conviction in Allah. Make dua to Allah. In your ibadah, just make sure that you know the one who... The one who grants sustenance to an ant that cannot be seen and a whole colony of ants. He is the one who definitely will give you and you are much bigger than a million ants or even a billion ants put together, Habibi. May Allah bless you. I hope these thank, beautiful thank you, words uh, have benefited myself, yourself and everyone who's going to be hearing this data, Habibi. So my beloved brother, don't worry. We all have a little bit of a concern. What's going to happen? Lives have changed. So what? Life... It might change forever. People are saying, I'll see you when all this is dying down. Today, I was thinking it might not just die down anytime soon. But so what? Alhamdulillah, we are in the ni'mah of Allah. We, we become stressed simply because we, we feel that way and we haven't understood the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at times. So Habibi, mashallah. Thank you so much for raising thank, me. Thank you, Mashallah. It was nice talking to you. See you again thank sometime, you. Inshallah. inshallah. And when I see you again, you have a broad smile and you tell me, Habibi, I've laid all my trust in Allah, Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil, which means Allah is sufficient for me. And he is the one who's going to take care of all my affairs, the best disposer of my affairs. So just say Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil. Okay, brother. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum Thank you. That was Stylaholic. MashaAllah tabaraka. Stylaholic. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, good message, I think. May Allah bless all of you guys and give you goodness. Uh, that's how I feel. I really, everyone has a sense of anxiety. We've all lost today. I was just telling my family members, you know, the trip that we had planned, we were going to go to Turkey. We were going to go to Mecca. We were going to go to Medina. We had so much planned as a family. All of that we lost financially. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. We haven't got the refunds. We haven't got anything. Subhanallah. Everyone's lost. So you know, take it in your stride and just thank Allah. You're alive, you're breathing, and you're, you know, you're okay. Your family is fine. That's the most important thing right now. We're living in a blessing, mashallah. I tried to connect with someone from Oman, but unfortunately, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. There is someone called Mirala saying, I really needed to hear uh, all this today. Mashallah. May Allah bless you too and grant you ease and goodness. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean. Um, can we pray Salat Taraweeh while following the Imam in Mecca? I explained my view. If you go to my YouTube channel, you will find a video where I say online Salah. And my opinion is that you shouldn't do that. Allah's taught you how to do it if you're not, you know, in the Jama'ah. 
then do your own jama'a or read on your own if you don't know the whole Quran. There are other ways of doing it. But I personally don't believe that we're allowed to follow the Imam of Mecca from a television or from the internet in our own homes, wherever we are. Uh, and there are many reasons I cited there. But may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for every one of us and give us goodness. MashaAllah. Insta Islam. Let's look at this uh, brother or sister, whoever it may be. MashaAllah. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as salam. How are you, Mr. Mehmet? MashaAllah. My brother, how are you? Alhamdulillah, oh. alhamdulillah, how are you? Alhamdulillah, where are you from? <clears throat> I'm from London, East London, Stratford. I love it because there was just someone who commented earlier to say, has anyone from UK joined the live and you are from UK? Yeah. Habibi, you have a few moments before your iftar. So pray for the ummah, pray yeah. for us and pray for everyone, mashallah. I hope and I pray that you are doing well. Give us some good news, man. Uh, good news is just I'm having hope in Allah, that's it, you know, and taking advantage of the Laylatul Qad. You know, I don't know, I remember if you remember me, Mufti Meg, um, I, I came to one of your talk. I always go to your Light Upon Light conference. I enjoy it all the time. And, um, you know, you're, you're inspirational and you make, you know, you make these uh, big difference, you know, like giving these speeches and you're very humble, mashallah. May Allah reward you. May Allah bless you. Allah, hey, my, brother, my brother, just make dua because um, you know, what happened here? So basically, yeah. you got your autograph. Ah, oh, mashallah. That's it. Yes, 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 mashallah. The squiggle, that's mine. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. May Allah uh, bless you. Habibi. Yeah, you know, good I just want to ask a quick question. Um, is there going to be Eid Namaz uh, this, this difficult time? Well, my brother, I need you to know something very interesting. You know, we, this time is unprecedented. We've never ever had a virus of this nature that has taken over the globe. Uh, and it actually spreads in a very, very uh, unique way. So there are scholars are uh, basically doing their best to um, arrive at juristic uh, rulings based on Islamic guidance as to what should be done. And for that reason, you know, the issue of social distancing in Salah, is it allowed, is it not allowed? You're going to get a few opinions. Uh, it's just a matter of time because people are looking at the evidence from the Sharia and putting their best to uh, explain the rules. So the same would apply to Salah to Eid. You really cannot go out because of that. Some of the scholars are saying that you should do it at home. I am one of those who say that you should do it at home because uh, you can just learn how it's done and do it at home with yourself or family members, inshallah. So I am one of those. But there are some who say that don't do it at home. Uh, it's fine, it's okay, that's an opinion. Uh, we're not going to fight them because they, we've never had this scenario and I pray that we never ever had it again in the future. So it's amazing. God bless you. For some reason, there was an echo and it, our voice is not clear. Oh, I don't know why it's echoing, but um, I think my iftar is here. That's all dead. Okay, keep me, in my, oh, keep me in your duas, inshallah. And thank you. Thank you. Inshallah. Asalaamu Alaikum. Okay. Wa Alaikum as wa rahmatullah. That was Insta Islam, mashallah. And he was asking me about. Uh, he was asking me about Salat al Eid. I'm sorry that some of you couldn't hear. Can you hear now? Subhanallah. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and grant you ease. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. This is a sister. I think she has tried before. I saw the comment. But what happens is while, oh, MashaAllah, tabarakallah. Bismillah. We're going to try one more time. Bismillah ar rahim uh, a Syrian sister. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. Keep al hal. How are you? Alhamdulillah, brother. I'm good. Alhamdulillah. That's great. So you're based in Saudi Arabia and you're from Syria? Yes, I, I'm Syrian, but uh, we're living in Saudi Arabia. Alhamdulillah. May Allah bless you, strengthen you, and inshallah give you the best of this lovely month of Ramadan, the forgiveness and Jannah that we're supposed to be achieving. May Allah grant it to you and to all of us. Ameen, Ya Rab, Ameen, and to all of you as well. Brother, I have um, a question regarding uh, i'tikaf. Yes. If a woman is on menses, can she also do i'tikaf just uh, without the prayers? You know, subhanAllah, uh, I just want to let you know something very, very interesting. The Hanafi school of thought says that women can make 
i'tikaf within the home. The other schools of thought say that i'tikaf has to be in the house of Allah, male or female. So basically there is that difference of opinion amongst the scholars. You need to understand that. So the ibadah of a woman, if she is on her menses, obviously is, uh, uh, you know, it's not stopped. She still must engage in uh, ibadah to the, to the best of her ability. You know, you won't be able to fast or do your salah. But regarding the recitation of the Quran, there is, again, a little bit of difference of opinion with uh, some of the scholars saying that you can only read Quran if it is Mu'awidat or if it is dua, or if you're teaching someone, or if you're learning, but not as recitation. That, again, is a Hanafi uh, school of thought. But the others allow it, and they would say that, you know what, you're simply not allowed to touch the Quran, but the recitation of it and all the other ibadah connected to the Quran, you could do it. So I'm just going to leave it at that for you, inshallah. May Allah make it easy for you and your ibadah, and make it easy Ameen. for everyone. Ameen. Ameen. These are days when even some of the men are saying, can I do the itikaf in my house? So I've seen some of the fatwas flying around saying it's okay. I'm still one of those who say that, you know what, it should be in the masjid. But uh, if people are going to set a, seclu a, a little secluded area in their homes in order to dedicate it for ibadah, they will have a different reward, but it's going to be rewarded. So it's not like you shouldn't do it simply because it's not considered a legit itikaf, so to speak. But it's actually a good thing to, to dedicate a place. If I were to turn around this camera right now, in my corner, I have a sajada there, which I sit, I sit on there and I do my Quran and I do my everything, whatever I need to do, so, subhanAllah. And it's just uh, on, in that corner. It's not, I wouldn't count it as an i'tikaf as such, but it's just the mihrab of the bait. The, it's just the little makan mukhassas fil bait, this salah. Yani, uh, it's not something that is going to be uh, you know, uh, sinful, it's actually very, very good. So inshallah, you do your best and leave the reward to Allah. Inshallah. And brother, Allah. I have one more question, if there's time. Bismillah. So, yeah. um, because of the, you know, corona issue and everyone is at home, we've been playing dua and saying ameen after the recording. Since it's a virtual recording and it's not an actual person saying it at that time, is the dua still accepted the same way? Well, I can tell you a dua is accepted even when it comes from the heart without uttering it, but it's better to utter it. So when you utter it, your tongue has engaged in an act of worship. Your lips have engaged in an act of worship. Your mouth has moved. So that ibadah is something where it, they bear witness for you. You know, like I'm sure you must know that all these organs bear witness for us. So to say ameen to a dua that's gone into your heart simply because you heard it from a recording, it's not wrong and Allah will give you what you've asked for because ameen in the Arabic language actually means istajib ya rabbi. So answer please, oh Allah, I, you know, I want this dua basically. So when you say ameen to something you've heard, even if it's a recording, the dua is legit, but there is a greater reward to repeat those words with your own tongue, subhanAllah, in order for more organs to be pleading with Allah than just your heart. I hope you understood it. Yes, yes, alhamdulillah. Thank you, brother. Thank you very much. May Allah bless you. And you Allah. pass my regards to your family, your loved ones. May Allah Insha protect Allah. you. Give you the Insha best Allah. of this, uh, this, uh, these times that are quite tough for everyone. May Allah mm -hmm. grant you the best of this time. And inshallah, I pray I mean, that we for your family as well, inshallah. Thank you, my sister. Yeah. Sorry, I saw your comment a few days ago. I was unable to pick you because normally while I'm talking to someone, the comment uh, goes up and it, it rolls in so far back mm -hmm. that I can't really scroll back. But today okay. we have the, had the opportunity, forgive me for the past chapter. You know, I kept messaging because I was really worried. We've been making dua every day through this recording. And I'm thinking it's in my head, what if it's not accepted? SubhanAllah. Trust me, Allah. Trust me, if you make a dua in your mind too, Allah knows it. Mm -hmm. SubhanAllah. Sure. And I want to tell you something else amazing about dua. When you've uttered something and you're asking Allah, oh Allah, I, I want to give you... What example can I give you? Let me give you, and I can give you an example of motor vehicles, but let's not be material. Okay, example okay. of marriage. Say for example, mm -hmm. there, is a, there is someone called Fatima and you really want to marry her. And by mistake, I'm talking about like a guy, okay? So by mistake, when you're making a dua, you, you, in your mind, you have Fatima in your mind, but your tongue is saying, oh Allah, grant me Zainab. Oh Allah, let me marry Zainab. Oh Allah, help me to marry Zainab. And, and, then, you, and then you're saying, I mean, and you finish and you're gone. And you didn't realize you actually were saying Zainab, but in your mind, you're, you were meaning Fatima, but you got the name wrong or something went wrong. 
guess what? Allah gives you based on what was in your mind, not what was on your tongue. Because Allah knows what you're asking for. It's like languages. You can speak in any language. In some languages, la means yes. Sorry, in, in our language in Zimbabwe, aywa means no. And in okay. Arabic, aywa means yes. So if someone were to say, if someone were to say, Rabi, and you say, aywa, so, so, so someone might think that, you know, are you foolish? And the person is saying, no, they might mean yes. In Albania, when you want to say no, you actually nod your head. And when you want to say yes, you actually shake your head. So Allah knows all of this based on how you've actually wanted it. Amazing. Barakallah fiki, sister. Okay, thank you, brother. Thank you. Barakallah. Salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Those were very important questions, I reckon. Guys, I hope we learned something. Uh, excuse all, all the Fatimas and Zainabs need to excuse me because you know what? We just use that as a, just as an example. Sometimes, you know, yeah, nice cap, mashallah. It is a nice cap, subhanallah. It's called an Omani hat, mashallah. Zanjibari, Omani, mashallah. And uh, it's a really beautiful hat, I do agree. Thanks to my friend uh, Hatim Al Abdus Salam from um, uh, Oman, from Masqat, mashallah. Beautiful brother. May Allah bless you guys and give you goodness. Yesterday you declined my call, so today you can accept it, inshallah. Here goes. MashaAllah. Let me take your soul. Someone is saying, you sound like the angel of death, Habibi. Assalamu alaikum. Brother, yesterday you declined the call and today the call is declining you. Look at that, subhanAllah. May Allah bless you. Okay, I'm going to have to close the call because we can't hear you. We can't even see you. My screen is just circling, trying to say we're connecting, but it's not connecting. Inshallah, let's see what happens. Allah grant you guys ease. This is someone from Nairobi. Let's see who it is. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, Sheikh. How are you? How are you, my brother? Alhamdulillah. I feel like a Kenyan to a certain degree because I'm sure you're aware of this. Umani Zanjibari, yeah. where which is common in Mombasa yeah. and even in Nairobi. How are you? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. That is great. How that is you? really great. Wallahi, I thank Allah upon all conditions. Tell us more about Kenya. Things are very slow. Uh, there is no massive test and all going here. And uh, 500 test, 20 or below to 15 are uh, positive and uh, nowadays like uh, two three days before the traffic is came back as a normal subhanallah so means may allah make me people, and give you good people people take it as easy but <laughs> hey salam alaikum is that your daughter <laughs> this is marwa actually we are from uh, kerala uh, media. So tell me, Marwa, do you have uh, do one, one daughter or do you have any more children? Yes. This is, uh, this we have three, three we kids. We have three kids. This is twin baby girl. We one, have one among twin daughters. Twin daughters. As so well, can I Marwa. guess one is, and one is Marwa? Am I right? This is Marwa. The other <laughs> one is Azwa. Azwa, Azwa and Marwa. And, wow. And, and then? And, and the third one is a boy baby. He is Jodan. 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 J-A-W-D-A-N. Jodan, yes, Jodan. Jodan is also a very nice name, inshallah, Jodan. Uh, and it's mm -hmm. not Jordan, but Jodan. Yes, you are 100% right. Mm -hmm. May Allah bless yeah. you, Habibi, grant you goodness and strength, mm -hmm. yourself, your family. Mm -hmm. So nice to be speaking to you. Allah protect you from all harm. And inshallah, I pray that we come out of Ramadan with great forgiveness of Allah mm -hmm. subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I pray that Amen. Allah accept us to, to yeah. you know, to, to search for and find the night of decree. And may Allah decree for us that which is best for the coming year. Amen. 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 Don't be Do take care. And inshallah, I, I pray that. You have time. Yes, <laughs> bismillah. One is uh, regarding zakat. Uh, yeah. I have a... Uh, uh, 
i'm i'm planning to give the zakat this time i have uh, a friend and his mom is having a neuron disease from the throat they uh, even she can't even uh, i mean uh, take the saliva inside so it's a non muslim but uh, sh- should i able to give the zak- from zakat uh, n- nisab also shafa may allah give her cure and grant her goodness and ease definitely Amen. you must be charitable but you can help them from your own money not from the money of allah so when allah's money is 2.5% he just wants you to do a few things with that he tells you listen mine is 2.5% you got to do a b and c with it if you want to do d e and f you can but with your own money inshallah may allah make it easy i hope you understood that yes yes i understood and the second thing is laylatul qadr uh, most of the time 